What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Just casually walking around the streets of Paris. So uh, not a whole lot of videos from this trip so far, but I'm finally recording one here. Arriving to day two of the 10K with like 400 entrants. So there's a couple sickos here. There's Joey, we're walking together. Anyways, I bagged 75,000 chips and there's a couple sickos on the table. It feels pretty tough and uh, finally get to showcase a little bit of EPT Paris because I haven't really played that many tournaments. Uh, just kind of been chilling, kind of been sightseeing and finally get to get into some poker. So hopefully we'll spin this one up and that's uh, that's about it. So let's just head to the venue because we're kind of late. So we're gonna start running now. We're on to this day two here with 65,000 chips. It's a big $10,000 tournament here and we're in level 11. I pick up ace deuce offsuit on the button. Action folds to me and a ace. I'm going to be raising this one. I raise up to 3,500 and I get the big blind to make the call. I have notes here. He's an older gentleman who's a wreck. So maybe playing a little bit different than normal here. We're off to a flop of deuce three, four, two hearts and a diamond. My opponent checks it over to me. I do have a pair. I do have a straight draw, but not a whole lot else going for me in this hand. I check this one back. Now going to a turn, which is the eight of diamonds, brings in a backdoor flush draw here. My opponent throws out 4,000 as a bet. I think a lot of the time here, I could just fold to be honest, but I do have some equity. I do have a pair. I do have a straight draw. Let's get in here. I make the call. Now off to a river, which is a seven of diamonds. My opponent bets, but on the smaller side, 5,000. And I think I perceive this bet as weakness. It seems a little bit exploitable here against my opponent to bluff on the river. And I think I have a good hand to do it with. I have basically one of the worst hands I'll ever arrive here with. So with my bottom pair, I raise things up to 20,000 as a bluff. And my opponent folds and lets it go. So it's a pretty solid pickup of a few chips to start off this tournament. When rolling in hot, it's always nice to get the first bluff of the day through. And we're moving on to level 12. We have 85,000, but sadly, I have a failed three bet attempt with ace jack off suit. I three bet preflop and lose when my opponent rips it in my face. So I have 70,000 chips, give or take, and no better sight to see than seeing pocket kings in early position. Here with a premium, I raise it up to 4,500 and I get a hijack player to make the call. I've seen him be a little bit splashy so far, a pretty active preflop. We're going to go to a flop out of position here, which comes queen, jack, five, two clubs. All things considered, pretty safe flop for me with my overpair. Lots of hands that I can get value from. I check it over to my opponent and he bets 6,000 and it's a pretty decent sized bet on this flop here and I'm going to go for more value. I start off with a check raise to 16,000. Obviously with my overpair, I wanna get as many chips in the middle as possible and why not start off here on the flop? Anyways, for 10,000 more, my opponent makes the call as I gave him a pretty good price to continue in position. And we're going to a turn which is the six of spades. Interesting spot here now as the SPR is pretty close to one. I don't really want to shove though and scare off my opponent. So I decided to bet on the smaller side to 12,000. Here I can easily go all in on the river for my 35,000 remaining, give or take. And when my opponent does make the call for 12,000, we're off to a river and hoping to see a brick. It is the three of hearts. Perfect river card that I wanted to see. If I was ahead on the flop, head on the turn, then I'm certainly still ahead here. I decided to basically go all in. I bet out 36,000, give or take, with one chip behind. It's basically an all in, signifying that, but not technically an all in as I save one chip behind. Anyways, I am just praying for a call at this point when my opponent goes into the tank. When he doesn't snap call, then my overpair must be good. And sadly, I don't get any action. No more value here, unfortunately, but it's a very solid pickup with kings, and I have well over 100,000 in chips now. Picking up the momentum, we have two very good hands to start off the day. Why not a third? A pocket sevens in the cutoff. I raise it up to 4,500. I get the button player to my left, shoving for 32,000. Here, given the blind levels, it's about 16 big blinds. Easy call with my specific hand. It's a pair and it's not a bad one. And we see we're up against ace five offsuit, which is pretty nice to see. Only one over card to fade, which is the ace. Trying to win an all in and you see I turn a set and he's drawing dead. 
Let's freaking go. We are building a stack here now. I'm running good, and I have well over 160,000 now steamrolling into this tournament. All this momentum rides on to the very next hand. Picking up ace, queen, offsuit, another premium in the low jack, and I get the undergun player who's a high stakes reg, opens it up to 4,000. Now onto me here, I think my hand certainly wants to three bet a lot of the time, certainly could call sometimes, but gotta play aggressive against one of the better opponents at the table here. So I'm gonna three bet to 12,000. Action folds around to my opponent and He's not scared. He doesn't care. He four bets to 28,000 himself. Here at this point, I think it's getting a little bit dicey. Granted, this is the second time my opponent has four bet into me after three betting him. And I know that against these high stakes regs, they're going to find bluffs in any spot that they're in. And I've just got to be capable to hold on sometimes with ace queen off suits. It's a little bit dicey because obviously my opponent is very good, but I'm in position and I'm here to battle. So I make the call for 28,000. And we're going to go to a flop of king queen seven rainbow interesting flop for sure with middle pair best kicker and sadly not feeling super comfortable with the king out there but my opponent does throw it a bet of 15,000 and continues c-betting i expect him to do this with his entire range of hands whether it's pocket jacks whether it's ace king who knows but with ace queen i think my hand is a little bit too good to fold right now so i make the call now we're off to a turn which comes a deuce complete rainbow board complete brick card that doesn't change anything and now my opponent throws out a bet of 25,000. Decisions, decisions, decisions now. On one hand, obviously not feeling very comfortable. My opponent is repping very strong hands like aces, kings, or ace-king. But like I said, this is a high stakes reg who is certainly going to be four betting and betting here with a lot more hands that are worse than that. So with ace queen here, middle pair and best kicker feeling a little bit indifferent whether I want to call or fold. And when that's the case, you know, I like seeing rivers. I like seeing what's going on. I make the call. So with about 65,000 behind in my stack, the pot is ballooning and we're off to a river, which is the five of spades. Another card that doesn't change a single thing. And with 65,000 effective left in my stack, my opponent throws out another bet this time of 25,000 again. The good old same bet from the last street. And now I am thrown for a loop. Honestly, I wasn't expecting this sizing. I was expecting my opponent to go all in basically all the time. But this very small block size is confusing to me. I think ace queen is certainly just good enough to flick in a call given really good pot odds. I guess I could beat worse queen X for value. A little bit ambitious, but here we are. I'm in this situation. I make the call, and I see we're up against King-10 of clubs. That feels bad. My opponent did find a light 4-bet, flops top pair, and basically gets the maximum against my specific hand of ace-queen. Just didn't know he was going to be value betting a king this thinly, and I feel pretty bad after this hand losing a big chunk. So that hand sucked. That was the last hand of uh, the break. Everything was going really, really smoothly for the first two hours. And that hand happened. Rough. Coming back to like 40K, 15 big blinds. <sighs> After the break, things were going so well, so well until that hand that I don't know what to do about. We're on to the next hand. After this break, got to regroup now, I guess. No need to sulk anymore here. Look, we're back in action, and it's the very first hand after the break, and I see ace-king off suits. Let's go. Time to rebuild. There's an undergun open to my right of 5,000 with only 40,000 in my stack. It's a pretty easy all-in with a very good hand. I'm all in in this situation in action fold around to the small blind who goes into the tank and thinks about his decision for a while before deciding to re-jam. He four bet goes all in and covers me by a little bit. Action folds around and we see where we have good news. We're up against ace queen in amazing shape to double up and to have almost 100,000 chips. We are off to a run out. <laughs> And bang, that river sucks so hard as now a queen high straight is going to beat my 
I guess, five cards straight on the flop turn and river. So that's a heartbreaking way to bust this $10,000 buy-in. <sighs> Not very happy about this one, but this is how poker can go sometimes. That didn't take long. That was literally the first hand after a uh, after break. The first deal. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do. If there's a 2K happening right now, I'm kind of demoralized. <laughs> after this week in Paris of tournaments, cash game obviously didn't go well. Currently demoralized. I will, I will get back to you guys when I am not demoralized. All right, I got some good news and bad news. Good news is that I walked a mile and a half to grab some boba, because that is what you call self-love when you're not feeling too great. I'm just uh, at Champs Elysees, a place where all the big like shops are, like LV is somewhere down there, a mile down there. Um, all these like Cartier brand, these big, these really expensive brands that I don't wear. Anyway, it's a very fancy street. It's a, it's a Saturday, so it's really packed. So I'm not gonna vlog while I walk in the middle of this. Anyways, like I said, I have some bad news that I will discuss when I'm back in my Airbnb. But for now, self-love, I'm feeling better. I had to get some boba, it only took a mile and a half walk. All right, back home at the apartment, Airbnb. I have even better good news. Before we get to the bad news stuff, good news is that I went to the Golden Arches Steakhouse and they have phenomenal food. It's like very exquisite and unique to Paris. Here, let me, let me show you guys. <clears throat> Their food is incredible, by the way. They have these things called bonnet et ma pa partage. Oh God. All I know is je suis un chat. That is the only French I know. They have McNuggets, but really like, like I, I kind of love McDonald's here to be quite honest with you. It's, it's really bad. I'm eating everything but French food while I'm in Paris. But what well, actually speaking though, is kind of cool. They have um, macaroons, which is kind of sick. Oh no, they fell. Anyways, these macaroons are actually pretty good. I tried them um, a day, just a couple days ago. I don't know why this won't focus. This is pretty annoying. Anyways, these macaroons are pretty fire, if this could ever focus. So yeah, one in Paris, one in France, McDonald's macaroons, whatever. Anyways, let's get into some of the bad news before I dive deep into the McDonald's here because um, just don't judge me, guys. It, it happens. So uh, I'm gonna rant a little bit because I don't have that much poker to show you, unfortunately. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, you would already know what the bad news is. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I don't know what you're doing. It's at Rampage Poker, and that's it. So you should you should make an Instagram. You should follow me because I post a lot of real time stuff up there. And uh, let's get into it now. Uh, basically, I'm buried. I'm buried. I, I'm, I'm down infinite uh, on this trip, which is not so good. And I don't have any content to show for it. I always loved like traveling to these different places and uh, at least kind of having a recap of the whole week or whatever main tournaments I play. Issue about tournaments though, it's very normal to just bust, bust, bust. And it's really not good content to just show lose, lose, lose. It's it's demoralizing, no one wants to see it. It is what happens and it's part of the whole tournament life where you're gonna lose a lot of the time. So I wanna capture deep runs and I haven't had any deep runs here, but uh, let's go over and tally up here how much I'm down. So I actually started the trip positive. I actually freaking cashed the tournament. If you go to my hand and mob, you'll see I min cashed a $1,100, 1100 euro freeze out for a whopping 1,800 euro or something. So I profited uh, 700 euro there. That was a good start to the trip. And then uh, subsequently I ended up busting a 10K mystery bounty. Then I busted two bullets of a 5K main. Then I just busted a 2K uh, turbo. Then I busted this 10K a uh, really big tournament, probably the biggest tournament I'll play. And then uh, also that cash game, I lost 16K Euro, 17K Euro. That kind of adds up to somewhere around minus 50K, give or take. I mean, mental math, I don't know how good that is, but it's high, uh, at least 50K US for sure. And that's just um, this week and I haven't played a whole lot of poker. It's just like, what happens? I didn't sell any action for these things, but you know, that kind of sucks. So I'm, I'm buried, I'm down a lot, and later tonight I'm going to fire probably the last tournament of this entire trip for me, which is a, a 2K. That's it, it's a 2K, no limit hold'em, you know, nothing special about it, but maybe you'll get like 100K, 150K up top for first place. 
Winning that would obviously get me out of the hole. But uh, yeah, that, there's me ranting. Uh, not as many poker hands. Hopefully more poker hands to come, which means I actually did well in the 2K. But for now, um, that's the situation. So um, I'm down a lot, I'm buried a lot. I really wanna make content for you guys, but it's tough because no one wants to see just me losing. Uh, I'm also stuck from the Bahamas trip too. I lost a lot in the Bahamas trip. <sighs> you guys might think I won a lot, but uh, the videos do not show that I won in Bahamas. So that is unfortunate. So I gotta figure that out in terms of poker, but uh, for now I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm done rambling. These McNuggets, or I'm not gonna try to pronounce what this says in French, but these McNuggets need to be eaten. I'm going to consume them. You should try out these macaroons if you're ever in Paris. And, uh, oh, one last thing I wanna show you guys. This is just a vlog, right? This is just a vlog and make whatever I want. This, this is really cool. <clears throat> I got these playing cards. Can you, can these please focus? For the love of Christ, focus. I got these really, I got these playing cards that look really cool. If you're a member of the channel, I'm giving these away. I would've already picked a, the winner and shipped it out by now, but if you're a member of the YouTube channel, I'm just gonna plug that. I'm gonna do some random giveaways, uh, whatever I see fit, and uh, you know, bring you guys along for the travels kind of and share the experience. So these are really cool cards. It seems like high quality cards, because these were freaking expensive. I'm giving them away to uh, a member of the channel. So that's it. So heading over to Max's 2K right now. I'm gonna have like 20 bigs. Whatever happens, happens. This is probably gonna be the last tournament of this Paris series. The cool thing is I just saw my balance of how much I have left when I wired money over here. Safe to say I am buried. The numbers I went over earlier is very accurate and I'm buried. So this is a 2,200 euro buy-in and I need to somehow break even. So win, then then I am positive for the trip. Lose, then I'm, I'm still buried. It doesn't change anything. So here we are, wish us luck. We're hopping to the 2K here and max late regging with 50,000 chips. We're on to level 12 where blinds are 1K, 2K, 2K, and I pick up ace three off suit on the button. Here, happy to open this one up with an ace. I raise it up to 4,000 and I get the big blind two call. Off to a flop of jack, eight, seven, two hearts and a club. Totally whiffing this flop here and I think it's going to hit my opponent more than me. Action's gonna go check, check and we see a board pairing seven on the turn. Brings it back to a flush draw as well, and my opponent fires out a bet of 9,500. <sighs> it's a really big bet. I have a whole lot of nothing on this board, but I take my time to think this one out. It's a very marginal spot with ace high, but I just don't believe that my opponent is going to be betting this big with value. I understand that the board is connected, it's draw heavy, so he just kind of wants a fold a lot of the time. And I think the equities are going to be running close here because I have a ace of hearts in this scenario. And I also unblock some of the clubs with the three of clubs. So I decided to actually make the call here and peel a one with ace high. I think I have pretty good properties as I unblock a lot of the bluffs that my opponent can have. So with that said, we're off to a river, which comes another eight. Double paired board, and my opponent checks. It looks like a give up. I'm happy to check this one back and take ace high to showdown, and he shows king nine of hearts. Gotta love that. I'll win this one. Ace high beats king high, and I win a pretty significant pot to start off this tournament. You know what's cooler than winning pots with ace high? It's picking up pocket kings under the gun. I raise it up to 4,500 here and I get the hijack player to make the call and the big one comes along as well. So we're off to a flop of ace, queen, three, rainbow. Gotta love how kings are always seem to be ace magnets here. Anyways, action's gonna check to the hijack player who bets pretty large as a bet of 7,000. The big one ends up making the call and I snap fold out of here. It's just how this trip has been going for me so far. Pocket Kings running into an ace high board. And I'm so, so certain that I'm beat here. And we see in the next clip that the action actually ends up going to showdown. And we see that the big one ends up winning with ace six of spades. He actually turned trips as well. GG's. Uh, I lose this one, but a little bit frustrating to have to fold Kings on an ace high board. All right. So that hand happened in level 12. Now we progress to level 16. Four levels later, no movement in my stack. I've been pretty card dead, and I pick up ace-10 offsuit in the hijack here. Finally hand to C, and we see that there's a plus one open to 10,000. Lojack ends up making the call, and with only 11 big blinds, I have a pretty easy squeeze and all-in spot because, well, there's so many chips in the middle that I want to fight for. I announce all-in for my last 11 big blinds. I get the plus two player to fold rather quickly, but then the Lojack player ends up tank full. Holding. All right, cool. 
I get to pick up some chips. I pick up a bunch of blinds now and I'm up to 85,000 after starting this hand with about 55,000. And following that one, I pick up ace nine of hearts in early position. I raise it up to 10,000 chips and I get the low jack player to go all in for 53,000. Action is going to fold quickly back to me, and I, uh, not a fun spot to be in given how shallow my opponent is. I'm trying to think of all the hands that he could have here at this spot. Granted, I don't think I'm going to be dominating many hands as he's not really going to be shoving worse ace-x, but there's a chance he could be. But most of the time, I'm going to be flipping and have some really good equity against all of his hands he's going to be shoving with. So, you know, calling here means gambling hardcore, but sometimes you got to do it. YOLO. Show me pocket eights, please. I make the call. My opponent has pocket queens. Crap. That is not a flip situation. But who cares when the flop comes ace high? It's not called gambling when you know you're going to suck out and get there. So a uh, pretty good result for me overall. Ace nine beating pocket queens, luckily, and holding. I'm up to over 130,000 chips, and we're moving on with the momentum building level 17 blinds have increased and I have 20 big blinds here. I have king jack of clubs on the big blind. There's a button player who opens and raises up the action then the small blind shoves all in. I mean, to give some backstory, this small blind player has been doing this a lot. Maybe my opponent can be doing this light here. So, you know, we got to gamble just like the ace nine hand. King Jack does have good equity against a lot of hands he could be shoving. So let's see what we're up against. I make the call, the button folds, and my opponent has ace king. All right. Uh, maybe I gambled a little bit too hard in this spot. Maybe a little bit too optimistic thinking that King Jack was going to not maybe be ahead, but have good equity. Well, GG's, I don't find the clubs, I don't find the jack, and that's going to end my Paris trip, sadly here, in heartbreak fashion. Sometimes you go with your read, sometimes you think he's doing it light, and they just, they just aren't, they just aren't. I deserve to bust that one. That one was a good torching. I'm glad you guys could witness the, the torch and punt captured on the vlog, because that's, uh, I was gonna say, it doesn't happen often, but no, this is literally what you come to watch for. So, um, GG's Paris, that's it for me. That wasn't super fun, but it happens to just brick everything. Granted, self-induced with the King Jack. Should be a pretty easy fold. I don't know why I didn't fold that time. Uh, we were like quarter of the field left, so we needed like half of the field left remaining to bust to make the money. It's all good. Anyways, this is Paris. I am uh, gonna figure out what I'm gonna do next for content because it's been a bloody, bloody, bloody few months to start the year. That's what happens when you play bad and you're not really, uh, you're not really fresh. Anyways, I'm done talking. This is the video. This is my experience in EPT Paris, keeping it realistic. It's not always binks and wins and all that fun stuff. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go back to America. I'll see you guys in Vegas or LA and Hustler. Can't wait to go back home to America and make some vlogs there.